And welcome back, everyone. As you may have noticed, I did stop that Domina gameplay pretty damn quickly because, I don't know, I just got rather bored with it very quickly over time. Now, I did have more episodes I could have put up, but I don't know. It just wasn't that kind of game that I wanted to let's play and wanted to play for a longer time. Now, it's not because it is necessarily a bad game. Not entirely. But it's not exactly a great one either. Now, I'm glad that I had a go at playing it, as it did provide a few decent hours of experience for myself. But And it was something amusing to while away a few hours during those times where you don't actually feel like thinking very much. Just one of those simple plug-and-play type games, but because of that, it also lacks the ability to truly engage as well. Now, I do like the general theme of Domina as it perfectly portrays the basics of being that slave master training and running a gladiatorial team. You do have those various aspects of team building, having many slaves under your control, growing them up as time goes on, fitting them out with new weapons, new abilities, growing that team. And that does provide that kind of initial hook to that gameplay. You want to see your team grow stronger. You want to see those individuals grow stronger. And it's great when you're playing through and you have that one warrior that's beating the enemy back and you're winning those great battles and you're able to reward them with new weapons and new gear and you get stronger as time goes on. That stuff is amazing. Due to this kind of like individual-based team building where you're sending them out on fights, you kind of get rather attached to individual warriors as well. Now... They don't have that much personality to them, and I think that is one of the faults to it. It'd be nice if these little individuals had their certain own traits, own abilities, own way of fighting per se, or just certain different character aspects to them. That would be, that would allow you to engage further with them, to feel more, you know, like they are your person, your team. But that stuff is limited. But even though that is limited, it does feel like you do have a connection to the individual. They grow in power level as you go. You enjoy watching them succeed and are kind of like scared of them dying to those rather terrible accidents that happen in there. And they do happen. Like I've had quite a few battles where I should have won. My warrior was the more powerful warrior in that field, but the enemy got off quite a few lucky hits and I didn't get one back and it just spirals down from there. And unfortunately you do lose them and it does hurt, but... Not enough that you really get too upset over the individual. It's not like, say, XCOM, where you have that personalization to your team, to each individual, how you color them, how you style them, and all that kind of stuff. But it is there to a certain extent. The management aspects of it are reasonably limited. Now you do get a certain amount of gold per win, and there's other resources like food and water as well. But generally... It's more just about how much gold you have, because gold transfers into everything else. It can be quite hard to manage with this gold resource, though. Not necessarily with the basics of food and water. That's pretty cheap and easy to get, but more. The gear you buy costs so much every time you upgrade from one piece to the next. And I think that was a reasonable failure of this game as well. Every time you bought a new piece of gear and had to upgrade it to another one, it felt like you were kind of being, I don't know, scammed in a way because the armor you had before that you did purchase that does sometimes cost a reasonable amount of gold just gets, just disappears. And then you get that new piece of armor, which doesn't make any sense. I've bought that armor. That was what I acquired, what I purchased, what that guy was wearing. It doesn't make sense that that goes away. It would have made more sense for this management game to have a certain resource base where you have various weapons and armors available that you have purchased before. And that would help this entire aspect of building up your team as it does grow larger. Because the larger and the more slaves you have, the harder it becomes to start kitting them out with various types of gear themselves. So you eventually have just, you know, three or four great geared gladiators. And the rest are just basic slaves. And that doesn't make sense to me. You know, you've got all this armor available. You've bought it. It makes sense, you know, hand-me-down kind of aspects of it, giving what you have to the other warriors on your team. That would make far more sense. And just, I don't know, it just seems needlessly punishing because of that. And god damn, a lot of that armor costs way too much. Like, 
each battle you're winning maybe two or three hundred gold and that's if you're lucky and to upgrade from certain sets to the next set will cost more than that like a decent weapon costs you a hundred gold in itself and it just makes the reward of these battles the risk reward elements of it because the risk is you lose your warrior and the reward you get maybe a little bit of gold out of it that doesn't actually upgrade much in the end it, it's just it doesn't feel right in certain ways the part I do think they got right was the whole managing and building that little base area you have. Not just with growing those resources, but there's also various elements there with improving the space you have, getting new resources available to your team, a blacksmith that repairs armor, as well as giving blueprints for certain pieces that you know gives you cost benefits. A philosopher that gives you certain bonuses to attacks and whatever else to have the healers and a whole manner of different NPCs you can choose that just really start your base growing dramatically, growing that power aspect. But you only have a certain amount of space available for those little NPCs, so you've got to kind of pick and choose which ones you do want available in your squad, in your area, to improve it. You know, what works for you, what works for your team, and kind of what works for your playstyle there. And you do see a lot of benefits over time because of that. There is a sort of progression aspect as well, like a skill tree that you go through as time goes on. Going from one part to the next, your warriors get new abilities available to them, are better at you know avoiding certain, certain attacks, at dodging it, using their other weapons, that kind of thing. You even eventually unlock two new sets of warrior types. The problem I found with this progression aspect, this skill tree was, it didn't really allow for too much diversity in your team. There was really just going up the tree from bottom to top, rather than snaking around your own individual paths. Now you can do that to an extent, but it just ends up you completing the entire tree, and that's kind of it. And I also feel like there should be more of those classes or more of those sort of abilities that you unlock as you go. Maybe they take a little bit longer to research, but with just having the three types of gladiators, it felt a little bit limited, especially considering it does take you quite a long time into the game to acquire either of those new fighters, and they really don't give you that much benefit over the basic one to start with. Not so much benefit, but it, they don't really seem like they play that much more differently, which is, I think, a fault of the game. You're not rewarded for that time spent researching, and it would be nice to have different strategic approaches to combat, you know, trying to counter certain warrior types with another warrior type you've, you know, that rock, scissors, paper kind of style of combat, but that doesn't play out exactly like I wish it would. The largest problem I think comes down to the game requires this constant action, constantly activating the slaves training elements over and over again clicking and clicking and when you have like basic level one warriors it's like every couple of seconds you're clicking on it to activate that training again now there is an element in their character sheets where you can slide up and down various aspects to tell them what you want to get trained or what elements you want trained in what percentage which is great but you still end up constantly clicking on your warriors over and over again at the start, this isn't too much of an issue. You only have four or five. But at the end, when you've got like 20 in that little area, your entire gameplay resolves around just click, 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 click all over the screen, constantly moving your mouse, click, 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 to the point where it feels like I'm playing this cookie clicker style gameplay. And that's not something I enjoy at all. It's also because of this cookie clicker style gameplay that I feel like I don't engage as much with the other systems of the game. The political aspects where you have those two other people standing around for you to gain favor and sway with. And just looking at the other mechanics and managing those other abilities. Because you're just so in, like stuck in constantly clicking in this one area that it takes up the entirety of that gameplay. It's like I get in the beginning, you want certain aspects to keep the person engaged in that you know, training regime, but there would have been far better ways to achieve that. <sighs> it just It's a style of gameplay that doesn't lend itself very well to a management style game like this. 
a game that you want to be stuck on for that amount of time. This is more of a pick up and play, click, click, click on your phone style gameplay. And that's not indicative of the game I want to do. I also feel like the combat is incredibly underdeveloped. Now, the worst part is that the AI is god fucking awful. Now, there is an element that you can train this aspect as well, but that should just be an element that grows as a gladiator develops. As they grow in power, they, their AI gets better. They get better at attacking and dodging and damaging and all that kind of thing. But just even at the beginning, it's two people that just charge into each other and whack-a-mole each other. And it's just so basic that it's almost comical to see those warriors attack each other like that. There's no strategy to it. There's no intelligence to those attacks. And it's not enjoyable to watch. It just ends up being who whacks the most wins kind of thing. And it doesn't feel rewarding in the end whether you win or lose. It's entirely up to RNG in those times as well. And this is a part I feel that would have made that entire aspect much more enjoyable to watch. First, you're just focusing on growing that team, the progression of your group, getting power and gear and all that and then you get to watch these great AIs play out each other using a little bit of strategy to you know hack where they can dodge out of attacks block and all that kind of thing but you don't see that it would it in the end it just comes down to two seconds of whack-a-mole combat and then it's over and you don't feel like you've enjoyed that moment with groups of people it is even worse it's like a group of five people mosh pitting in the middle whacking each other with swords there's no strategy there there's no enjoyment to that combat in the end once again it's completely rng who wins sometimes your team of warriors is actually more powerful but they all stood in the attacks of all these people hitting them all at once and they died in a second that's amazing thanks you know it would be nice to have this entire strategy combat play out along that entire arena back and forth all that kind of thing that would have been enjoyable to watch but right now because of the ai the entire combat aspect is lacking. Now there is the element there to control your warriors as well, to use the controller. It just feels better. To move your warrior to attack when you want to dodge and those kind of things, but the controls aren't exactly responsive and the actions and commands you have during this combat seem a little bit too limited. It doesn't give the options and the depth there in that combat needed to make it enjoyable enough to do every single time and there is a lot of combat there. Yeah I guess you're probably going to win because of that but that's only because this AI is so atrocious at attacking and making any sort of strategic approach and in the end that doesn't feel like an enjoyable combat situation either because you haven't won because of your own skill. You've more won because the enemy and the AI is just that bad. Now overall it wasn't a bad game and I did enjoy it for the amount of time I spent. It's good for those times where you don't exactly feel like thinking, where you're back from work after a long day and you just feel like clicking something on the screen for a couple of hours and watching gladiators smash each other with swords. That kind of stuff is just enjoyable for a background activity while you're watching, I don't know, some critical role or something. But for an actual engaging game where you want to pour your time onto it where you want to watch and be strategic and manage all those elements and optimize processes and get gear and progress and all that kind of stuff it's just too limited to be enjoyable well thanks everyone and i will see you next time